you heard of erosive osteoarthritis? No? Well, you aren't alone. Erosive OA is a subtype of osteoarthritis and understanding if you have it can set yourself up for success as you learn how to live with it. Today, I'm going to share the journey of my patient, Cheryl, as I know many have similar experiences. As we go through her story, along the way, we're gonna discuss how to talk about your hand pain to get your doctor's attention, how your doc thinks about cases of hand pain and determines next steps, and the details of erosive osteoarthritis and how it is different from run-of-the-mill OA. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Cheryl, whose name is obviously changed, was a 57-year-old woman at the time who was having worsening hand pain over the last three years or so. She'd been having weakness and couldn't open jars or hold her toothbrush like she once could. And what's really been bumming her out is she hadn't been able to do the needlepoint she used to love doing. Her whole social network had been built around her needlepoint and she's noticed her mood had gotten worse since not being able to participate like she used to. I wanna stop right here and highlight the wonderful job Cheryl did in describing how her pain was impacting her life. Now, I understand not only that her pain has been going on for three years and is in her hands, but I can really see how this isn't just the occasional nuisance, but a significant change to her well-being. She had seen her doctor about it, but was initially told she's just getting older, which isn't really helpful at all, but something she was willing to accept as many of her friends were complaining of hand pain as well. But as the time went on, she noticed that there was something different about her hands as she saw them changing, much more than her friend's hands. This is often the straw that breaks the camel's back and gets people to push for more testing or a referral to me. Not only was she seeing her hands and knuckles seem to change, but she noticed her pain would come in flares and some of her knuckles would get extremely tender. She noted that if she accidentally banged her hand on something, the pain seemed way out of proportion. These are all great things to notice and communicate to your doctor and she was absolutely right to start thinking that perhaps there was something different about her pain. And I was so happy when I heard what she decided to do next. And by the way, if you want guidance on how to best prepare for your appointment with a rheumatologist or really any autoimmune specialist, check out the free Appointment Home Run Handbook. It will help you tell your story so that your doctor can get your answers faster and avoid the miscommunications that we all have experienced in the doctor's office. The link is in the description box below and there are special rheumatoid arthritis and lupus editions. So after multiple appointments with her PCP, where she wasn't quite feeling heard, she decided to get a new primary care doctor for essentially a second opinion. Thankfully, this new provider listened to her with fresh ears and although did also suggest that her hand pain was likely just a part of getting older, agreed to do more initial testing of the rheumatoid factor. Now, in case you aren't familiar with this test, it's an autoantibody that is oftentimes found in those with rheumatoid arthritis and is used as an initial screening test. However, if you've watched any of my rheumatoid factor videos, you know it's not a perfect test and usually leads to needing more information, which is what happened to Cheryl. Cheryl's rheumatoid factor came back at 42, which by her lab's reference range was considered a low positive result, and she was then referred to rheumatology. Okay, so this is where I come in. Before even walking through the door, I knew inside the clinic room was a 57-year-old woman with hand pain and a positive rheumatoid factor, so my mind was already zeroing in on rheumatoid arthritis versus osteoarthritis. Of course, I always keep in mind the many other reasons a 57-year-old woman may have hand pain and a rheumatoid factor, but common things being common, I was prepared to have to decide between RA versus OA. Cheryl and I had a lovely first meeting and she shared with me her story as I've laid it out for you. And I immediately agreed with her that her pain seemed out of proportion to what we may expect from a 57 year old with hand osteoarthritis, which by the way, 57 is not old. Well, I'm not that old. When we started the physical exam, I looked at her hands and I immediately narrowed my thinking. And this is why. Her hands had many of the classic findings of osteoarthritis and hardly no evidence of rheumatoid arthritis. So let's go through these. So first off, on initial glance, I can see that the hands have lost some muscle. The tendons on the top of the hands are just a little more pronounced than you would expect. And although it's not 
particularly evident in the picture, in person you can definitely feel it. This isn't specific to osteoarthritis as it also happens in rheumatoid arthritis and as we age, but still something to note. And especially as we think through our treatment plan. Next, I'm struck by the enlarged boniness of many of her knuckles. Sometimes people will call this swelling, which can be confusing because swollen knuckles is often thought of with rheumatoid arthritis. Although these may look swollen, they don't feel swollen. They feel bony. Swollen knuckles from rheumatoid arthritis feel hot, boggy, and squishy, whereas these felt hard, bony, and cold. And it's where I see the bony knuckles that's important too. Notice it's the middle and last knuckles, but not so much the first big knuckles. This is classic for osteoarthritis as RA doesn't affect the last knuckles of the fingers and will usually always affect at least one or two of the big knuckles. I could definitely appreciate how she was seeing her hands change, specifically in the pointer finger on the left hand and both pinkies, and can also see how needlepoint had become difficult. As important as what I see is what I don't see. I don't see any soft tissue swelling of the wrists or the big knuckles like I would with RA. I don't see any rashes like I made with lupus, and I don't see any skin changes or Raynaud's like I made with scleroderma. So we finish off the physical exam without any other big findings, and I now have a plan on how to confirm what my strong suspicion is, which is Cheryl has osteoarthritis, and based on how severe her hands look, I am worried she has erosive OA. When I explained to her my thoughts, she asked the most natural question. What the heck is erosive OA? Erosive osteoarthritis is a subtype of OA. It's not an autoimmune condition, at least as far as we know now. It is a particularly aggressive form of OA and typically affects just the hand, specifically the knuckles of the fingers as Cheryl has. To confirm my suspicions, I did two things. I ordered x-rays of her hands and some follow-up blood work. Although I had a strong hunch that we were dealing with OA and her rheumatoid factor was a false positive, I didn't want to make any assumptions. The hand x-rays could show us findings that are specific to OA versus RA and checking the anti-CCP antibody could help me understand if the rheumatoid factor meant something or not. As expected, the CCP came back negative, furthering my suspicion that her rheumatoid factor is in fact a false positive, and the x-rays returned showing many changes of osteoarthritis. Without getting too much into the weeds, which joints are affected and how they look on an x-ray can help us differentiate between RA and OA. And the way these joints look on x-ray, the way we've lost sight of some of the joints in some of these fingers, and the gull wing sign we see in others is in line with erosive OA. So why did this happen to Cheryl? There appears to be a genetic component to developing erosive OA, and at least in the early stages, an inflammatory component, which can explain why many feel flares or like their joints are super tender. However, despite the evidence of inflammation, treatments we use in rheumatoid arthritis just don't work in erosive OA. At this point in time, we don't have any dedicated treatment focused on erosive OA, and this is where having some frank conversations with Cheryl became really important. When dealing with osteoarthritis, but especially erosive osteoarthritis, treatment is focused on controlling pain and maintaining function. As at the time of this recording in 2024, we don't have any therapies that can reverse or prevent the joint damage from erosive OA. We use a variety of tools to accomplish these goals of controlling pain and maintaining function and we can personalize how we use them based on what the patient's goals are. In Cheryl's case, she was clear from the beginning she wanted to get back to needlepoint. I knew immediately this was going to be a challenging goal to achieve, if not impossible. I also knew I would need help and we set Cheryl up with an occupational therapist who could work with her regarding modifications that could not only help with needlepoint but also decrease her pain overall. She also helped her with some hand strengthening exercises which are super important when you have OA as losing hand strength can worsen pain and obviously impair your ability to use your hands. Cheryl has done well but we had to together adjust what we mean by well. She was able to make many modifications to her daily life with the help of her occupational therapist that decreased her pain and she found a pain medication regimen that she could rely on when she was having a flare or a rough patch. She, however, could never really go back to needlepoint. It was just too much strain on her hands. But 
she found that with the changes she had made, she was able to hold a paintbrush. And she started painting on needlepoint canvases and then passing them on to her friends to finish off with needlepoint. This allowed her to continue to be in her group, contribute, and flex her creative muscles. Osteoarthritis is considered something we just have to deal with as we get older. So it can be poo-pooed and you are left to figure it out on your own. This really shouldn't be the case with any osteoarthritis, but especially not with erosive OA, as it's more than just about getting older. I hope you learned something about erosive OA, what the journey can look like, and took away some tips on how to move forward with your own journey. If you have any questions about your hand arthritis or are wondering if you have erosive OA, I'm open for rheumatology second opinions and I'll put a link to learn more in the description box. If you want to learn more about RA and see if you have any of those symptoms, check out my other videos here. Thanks and we'll see you next time.